Hey Bucks fans, welcome to week two of the FSW Coaches Show here at Florida Southwestern State College. I'm Sports Information Director Roy Allen, joined by the godfather of Southwest Florida softball, Robert I. Murray today. Coach, how are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for inviting me. Coach, first question, we'll take a quick look back at last year. Obviously came into a unexpected and a tough one for your team, sitting with a 23-2 record, ranked number three in the country, obviously a team that had aspirations of being at the national tournament in St. George. How did you take that personally, and, and what was your message to your players after that season came to an unexpected end? Obviously, it's very disappointing. I think uh, every team works for that part of the year. We were just starting conference. Uh, we had spring break. We did a team bonding thing, and you, you really think your team's on a roll. So, you know, a lot of us are, were obviously disappointed, but, you know, the, the great things happen if you realize adversity. Certain things happen for a reason. So, you know, we just felt like, uh, you, know, the, you know, the good news is some players got to move on. Uh, the great news is some of the players got an extra year uh, that we get to work with them. Absolutely. Coach, lots of changes obviously this year. Seasons pushed back for the fall sports. Didn't affect you a ton as far as that's concerned schedule-wise, but what have been some adjustments that your program have had to make with the changes with COVID-19? Um, different practice schedule. Um, obviously, uh, we're at an eight-hour schedule. Uh, the coronavirus has affected you know some certain things, the way we do workouts. Um, it's kind of helped out. We've done some individual work, so that helps out. Um, you know, the biggest part is, the good news is, um, one of our international players has actually finally got out of New Zealand. She's flying in, uh, but we have three players that you know that you're counting on that that's going to get a little bit behind. So that that's the hardest part of not having everybody on that same page in the fall. Coach, week three of practice just getting going now since your players have come back for the fall semester. Anybody in particular that stood out so far, and just as a team in general, where do you feel like your team's at right now? Um, I'm very confident. Uh, a lot of the, the the good news about it is your your basically your whole infield's intact, so uh, we get to spend a lot of time with the new players. You got the returners kind of helping them out. I'm excited about some of the freshmen. I mean, you know, uh, Lauren has really swung the bat very hard. Uh, Chelsea, who we picked up late in August uh, from St. Thomas. Um, Chelsea Brown is just uh, this weekend the scrimmage had great shot to right field on an out pitch, great uh, double to left field on an in pitch, which you know that's a surprise when you know somebody comes to you at the last second. Uh, really impressed with Yindi, um, cat like skills on the bases. Um, uh, she actually we have a big backstop and pass ball. The catcher took her time. You know, didn't realize it's a big backstop, and she went from second home on a pass ball. So her aggressiveness is on the base bases. I think Brooke Brooks come in working real hard as a pitcher. Uh, she hit a home run. So you know, I'm real pleased. You know, to 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 watch our freshmen and uh, they they're kind of sending a message to new players. We're not coming here to sit the bench. We're coming here to take your job. And speaking on that, coach, probably the most experienced team of all of junior college this year was six returning third-year players for your program this season, uh, two of those being All-Americans, and then you also have a player in her fourth season in Shanika Klett with you this season. Talk about how valuable having experienced players like that is once the spring comes around, but even in general this season with all the unexpected. Yeah, I, I think the biggest addition has been the uh, just the atmosphere off the field, in the locker rooms, how you things get set up. Uh, I think the core, a lot of times you've got players that might have been a freshman a year before and they're transitioning, okay, this is kind of what you're supposed to do as a sophomore to get things rolling, how you how do you go to practice field, how everybody carries the equipment. Um, I'm extremely pleased. It, it's, it's almost like you do have a, a, a four-year program. I mean, some kids are, most of the kids are, you know, a core of the third year, but there, there's a big core that's returned. Uh, that just kind of they know how things are done and it just it's really um, like I said earlier I've gained weight since the break just because uh, there's less stress on me because I think your kids know what know what to do and what to expect and really this season almost the experience of a four-year program if you look at the roster as far as newcomers second year players third year players fourth year players you've got a very very experienced roster from that standpoint I, ironically that's kind of one of the disappointing things of okay now I have third-year players and second-year players, not Can't kids who just 
that or, or freshmen, we're playing Division One teams, right. and really half your lineup is kids you really haven't had that you just had them for two weeks. Where now you had a core that hey, we want to go match up against the four-year programs, and they're just not nobody to play this year. Uh, another familiar face back in the dugout this year, Coach Kelly Quarles comes back after spending the season at Duke University in the ACC. Uh, talk about Kelly's impact on the offense and, and the program in general. Uh, that's huge. Um, it, you know, it's it's nice to have a coaching staff. Kelly worked with me three years. Uh, Marta played two years with me, and, and now she's returning for a second year of coaching. Uh, but the experience Kelly has with hitting, uh, I think she learned a lot at Duke as far as um, she, she was outstanding teaching the power swing. I think the one thing she picked up at Duke was a more balance in the box that you're not vulnerable for changeup. I mean, I was, I watched the camp and I was just like, mm, we're going to be pretty solid. You know, you're going to have power but not vulnerable to, to the off-speed pitch that we were two years ago. And um, she, she's as detailed as I am when I watch pitchers and spins. Uh, she's as detailed, watching video, sending the video to the to the batters, so they're getting both visual. Besides the communications, they're getting video clips of, of what what sh what they're doing and the adjustments they want to make. So it's it's uh, you know I really feel like you know our coaching staff is experienced as, as most coaching staffs in the country. Uh, you know obviously the the top twenty or thirty are elite, but you know with the top fifty, I I feel comfortable with this coaching staff with their experience. Absolutely. Coach, obviously five years in, under your belt now with the program, first three years go to the national tournament, last two seasons a combined record of 77 and five, almost an unbelievable number, 77 wins, just five losses for your program over the last two seasons. What has been the key, just in general, what kind of makes the Florida Southwestern State softball program tick? I got to really attribute that um, probably our first year program. Um, their goal was to set the standard um, and not too often you can be a brand new program first day playing out you're playing defending champions and you beat them um, that's just incredible very few people you know I'm fortunate I had the experience between coaching travel ball you know with my daughter playing in the SEC I knew the type of athlete we wanted but to get the athletes to bring them in and get them just to buy into hey we can set every standard that's out there and the first day you're playing a defending national champs and they didn't blink. And when you when you when we won that game, we felt like, hey, these guys, they're gonna rise up to any they're they're not gonna be intimidated by anybody. And when you start a program out that first day, that you know, it's made it easier for us. Set the bar pretty high. They yeah, won yeah, the defending national champs. Yes, they did, and they finished in the top ten in the country. I mean, I think every coach that starts a brand new program, because I even called a friend of mine and says, Hey, do you really think, you know, you, you, you won a national championship, do you think the next year, to be honest with you, a Duke's first year team could beat you their very first game, or a Clemson beat you the first game? He goes, God, I hope not. And uh, so I was pretty proud of that moment of that with, the, with our whole program. Absolutely. All right, let's turn the page a little bit. We can, we can loosen the belt, have a little fun with these rapid fire questions. We're going to get to know Coach High Murray away from the softball field here. I know that's you're a very mysterious person. People want to know these questions. So okay. we're gonna go some rapid fire questions here, okay? First one this is an easy one. You're a sports guy. What's your favorite team or sport away from softball? Definitely a St. Louis Cardinal fan. Baseball fan. Um, I finally got to go to a Cardinal game a year year ago to actually watch the Cardinals play in St. Louis. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, favorite food for Coach I Murray? Oh, it's simple. Everybody knows pasta. Anything Italian, but definitely I'm a pasta eater. <laughs> pasta guy. Um, game day superstition. What, what's something that you do and don't do at your work? It's probably something I did when we won the game before that. <laughs> um, usually that's how superstitions start. When you do something, you start to win. You kind of keep doing certain things. So uh, the superstitions usually change, but usually when you get in a role and there's something you did, then that's the superstition. For that the becomes the superstition. That becomes superstition until you get beat. Coach Murphy on last week's show told us that he uses a, a certain pin until they lose. So on his marker board in the locker room, uses that every single time until they lose. Once they lose, he gets rid of that marker. He said last year he lost his marker before their first loss of the season. Oh, so wow. it works. Superstition only works if, if it happens. So. Absolutely. All right. You know you're a big golfer, like to be on the golf yep. course. What is your golf handicap? I have to confess, I'm a scratch golfer. Wow, scratch golfer. But you gotta count, you can't count the 25 mulligans I use to get there. <laughs> <laughs> what 
Hell, that's, I mean, it just depends what tournament you're playing and you can buy those, you know. Uh, what's your dream vacation spot? If somebody came in and said, Coach, you can go anywhere in the world right now, jump on a plane. Well, maybe not right now, but yeah. at some point in time, where are you going? Actually, we were just going to do it this past summer. We actually had to postpone it. Um, all of our ancestors, between my wife and myself, we were going to go on a European cruise to go to Spain, uh, Spain France, and Italy. So you have that, that trip replanned now? We planned it. Actually, we planned it to, it was going to be our 30th anniversary. We planned it to our 31st anniversary. 31st. And then we actually have to now back it up two weeks because the school got back up two weeks. So my wife's got to work two weeks. But we're going to get, we're definitely going to get to Rome. Time for a visit Rome. It's an awesome place. Uh, most memorable play or moment of your softball coaching career? Yep. Um, I was coaching a little league team. We got in a loose bracket. Uh, we had to beat this team from Waco, Texas. Uh, they, they keep winning 11 and 12 year olds. We were fortunate we'd win the 13 and 14 year olds. Uh, they put us in a loser's bracket in the regional tournament. Uh, we came back and got to them to where it was just us two left. We had to beat them twice. Uh, beat them the first game, had all the momentum in the world, thought, we're, hey, we're on our roll, one more win, we can do it. And in the top of the first, uh, leadoff out gets on. Next thing you know, it's first and third, no outs. Um, most incredible play, the girl, third batter in the lineup, no outs, and really the pressure's on us because we're not a high scoring team, we're a defensive team. She hits a hard ground ball to our shortstop. Our shortstop checks the girl at third, gets the batter out at first. First baseman turn and makes a great play at the plate, get the girl going from third home. Their runner's aggressive runner that was on first tried to go to third, and we got her at third. It was the hardest triple play you'll probably ever see in America. Uh, that just set the momentum for us. We came back, they fell apart, scored a couple runs in the first. Uh, we won, our, won a trip to go to the Little League World Series that year, but uh, that will always be a great play. So just your routine 5-2-3-5 triple play, huh? 5-3-2. to three to two. Back to 5-5. Back, to, five. Five. back, to, back to 5, <laughs> yes. Just write that one in your scorebook. Yeah, it's a great play. All right, last one. It's a big one. If you could have a superpower, what would your superpower be? Um, I think I got part of it, but everybody knows I, I have a great vision. I, I try to anticipate what's going to happen. So if, if I got a superpower, it's definitely anticipate to make sure I call the right pitch and make sure I have the defender standing in the right spot. Well, Coach already has half of that superpower that he wants to have, so that's a good thing. Uh, Coach, appreciate you playing along. The myth, the man, the legend, Coach Robert I. Murray. Appreciate you joining us for the appreciate show this week. You. Thank you, and thank you, fans. Thanks, everybody, for watching this week. That's week two of our FSW Coaches Show. Take a look next week, FSW Bucks, on social media as we have week three of our show. Coach Thais Baziketo Allen of the FSW volleyball team will join us as her team gets set for their second season of action this spring. Thanks again for watching. Go Bucks.